Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, in the sports section, the vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News. On iTunes, the vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News. One word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there's a line out there. We're looking for value. There's a line out there that I don't understand. Um, one of these fighters must have been stabbed or must be staying out late at night not caring about his weight because this line makes absolutely no sense to me. You know, Anthony Mundine right now, according to Las Vegas Casinos, is a plus 300 underdog. Plus 300 underdog against Sergei Rabchenko. Now, let me just be blunt here. The lines matter. The odds matter. If you're out someplace and a friend texts you or calls you and tells you that a certain class of fighter, let's say Floyd Mayweather, right, is a plus 300 Right? Miguel Cotto is a plus 300. Janady Golovkin is a plus 300. And that fighter is not fighting outside his weight class. Someone like Vladimir Klitschko. Then you need to excuse yourself from whatever meeting you're in. You need to head over to the casino and you need to take care of business. Right? Because quite frankly, let's be real here. I can't name a single person at 154 pounds who I would place Anthony Mundine as a plus 300 against. You know, I know Mundine was in a car crash his last fight. He hit the canvas five times against Joshua Clotty. But two fights before that, just two fights before that, Mundine became the first man to stop future Hall of Famer Shane Mosley. Right? You want to talk about a big puncher, right? Before we even talk about Rabchenko, what about Shane Mosley? Right? Look at the film of that fight. Mundine, who's kind of like a cross between Floyd Mayweather and Juan Manuel Marquez, is setting traps. Right? He has Shane Mosley walking into traps. Right? Just look at the sizes of the two guys, too. Right? Shane Mosley physically looks small compared to Mundine. Also understand that Mundine is an excellent defensive fighter. He's the kind of guy who, if he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to leave a corner. He can literally lean on the ropes and be there for three minutes and still win the round. You go through Mundine's record and you're going to see that Mundine has won several fights by wide margins. Now, boxing's a little bit of an odd sport, right? Um, knockouts, knockdowns, they cause amnesia, right? You can be prepared. You can have a game plan. If you get hit upside the head the wrong way early, right, then your balance might never come back for the next 11 rounds, right? But understand, take Lucien Butte, who famously got stopped by Carl Frotch. Understand that Lucien Butte later would fight Jean Pascal, and while he lost the fight, he went the distance. Right now, Anthony Mundine really is the same Anthony Mundine who beat Shane Mosley. Yes, he lost the Clotty fight. No one here is claiming he won the Clotty fight. Yes, he got knocked down several times in that Clotty fight. Absolutely. But one bad day shouldn't erase the guy's body of work, the guy's defensive skills. Right now, I've looked at Rabchenko, and Rabchenko is another one of these guys who is flat footed, heavy handed. He has a greater than 70% KO ratio, right? He is a major body puncher, he's an explosive puncher. 
right? Doesn't have a great jab. Doesn't have great defense. Look close at his record. Bradley Price went the distance with him twice. I want you to look at the first Bradley Price fight around the eighth round or so. Rabchenko is out of gas. He's breathing through his mouth. He's breathing heavily. His defense is falling apart. Right? Understand, this guy comes in, he's throwing nothing but heavy punches. He's not subtle. Right? His fastball, his big punch, has worked so well that he hasn't had to learn other pitches. He's a one-trick pony. Right? It's front foot and it's heavy punches. Understand, a guy like this is tailor-made for Mundine because Mundine knows where he's going to be. He's going to be on his front foot. He's going to be right in front of Mundine. One of two things is going to happen. If Mundine, and boxing's a brutal sport, if Mundine, who is in his very late 30s, right, Father Time is going to beat all of us eventually. As Jim Morrison of the Doors famously said years ago, no one here gets out alive. If Mundine's age has suddenly caught up with him, if the sport of boxing has made him an old man overnight, then he'll get blown out early by Ravchenko. But if he still has his skills, if he still has the skills that he had against Shane Mosley, he might as well bring a blackboard in the ring. He's going to be teaching this young man the sport of boxing. Understand, Mundine wants guys to be hyper-aggressive with him. Because that's when they walk into punches. Right? This isn't that different than one Manuel Marquez leading Manny Pacquiao into his right hand. Right? Counterpunchers, and Mundine is a major counterpuncher. Counterpunchers want you to lead. So they can then take advantage of the openings. So they can then literally have you hang yourself. I see nothing from Rabchenko that suggests to me that he's going to do anything other than what he did in the Bradley Price fights. Understand, the second time he fights Bradley Price, Bradley Price takes that fight on one week's notice. And then Bradley Price goes the distance for the second time against Rabchenko. Right? Bradley Price is the kind of guy who can make adjustments. Right? He figured out Rabchenko's game. Let's just say Rabchenko isn't a Rubik's Cube. It's not that much of a mystery. You know, he's a young guy in front of you who thinks he's special, thinks he has special punching power, and thinks he could walk through you. Anthony Mundine has put together what I believe is a Hall of Fame career fighting exactly guys like this. Now sometimes one of these guys gets lucky with a punch. Think the first Garth Wood fight. Right? Sometimes Mundine's defense isn't completely up to par. Okay, fair enough. But what I have learned, you can compare the first Garth Wood fight with the second Garth Wood fight. What I have learned is that sometimes a fighter needs a wake-up call. Sometimes a fighter is sleepwalking through bouts and needs a cold slap in the face. Joshua Clotty gave Mundine that cold slap. Understand, as bad as that beating was, Mundine went the distance. Right? I'm expecting, just like I'm expecting, in the Hopkins fight against Kovalov, I'm expecting by, let's say, the 6th, 7th, 8th rounds, the younger fighter here to run out of gas. The older guy 
the savvier guy, the better defensive fighter, is also the guy who's going to have more stamina. If you're going to give me three to one odds, I'll gladly take Anthony Mundine. If I had one bet to make, it would be on Mundine to win this fight. If I'm allowed to hedge the play, I would hedge that with Rabchenko by KO. I just don't see this young guy with these skills being able to outbox Mundine over 12 rounds. And be careful on the length of the fight. Understand, this is a WBC silver light middleweight title fight. So it's 12 rounds, right? Also understand too, Mundine is Australian. This fight is in Australia. Radchenko is going to be traveling to Mundine's backyard for the fight, right? How a young guy who hasn't had really big fights against elite opposition has been installed as a big favorite over a great slick defensive fighter like Mundine is a mystery to me. I like the three to one underdog here, Mundine to win, hedged with Rabchenko by KO. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and through our sportsbetting.com. Also, take a look at our pay site on YouTube. We have a free site on YouTube, but our pay site on YouTube is Dwyer Sports Betting. Thanks for stopping by.